Oh yeah. Oh man. It's a family friendly You know it had way more innuendo than I thought it was going to? Garfield? Really? I haven't watched it since I was a kid. Yeah. There were several episodes of Garfield and Friends that, like, I just remember being... Because, well, yeah, as a kid, you're just like, whatever, it's farm humor. And then you get older and you're like, wait a minute. They were totally talking... Wow, okay. Talking about a penis. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, I'm actually going to fix this up. You two should totally talk. Yo. If I could recite the entire theme of King Arthur and the Knights of Justice right now, I would. But I don't know it. I, I know it, but I don't want to sing it. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> but if you have a chance, go to YouTube right now and look up King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. And then watch, and then listen to the touch right after. They want me to sing it. Uh, no. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on. And then, from the field of the future... A, a new hero will come to save the day. I might be wrong. No, to save the world of the past. To save the world of the past. And that's why I wanted to use it for your video games, because it's about preserving old games. Uh, I would just hum the guitar rift. I actually don't know what he says, because it's old 80s. Rock of the storm with the knights fighting evil and crazy. Yeah, man. A team of heroes in an evil... Arthur and the Knights of Justice putting evil down. And then he repeats it, but he repeats like, the same thing again. This, go watch it, please. The funny part is that song's really short. It is. Like compared to a lot of other cartoon intros, it's like non-existent. But it's but it's so damn catchy that you can never forget it. That the garlic, the gargoyles theme song, like was so catchy for me, even though it's not like theme theme. No, there's no lyrics, it's just da 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 da. Well, I mean, for the second season they added all the voiceover, right? That's right. So I've been meaning to ask you, uh, before I prevent you from going to write more code, what do you think of Exard? Um, I think it looks like it's about Blaze Blue Speed, and I don't know if Arc System knows how to make a good game anymore. So right now you're like, don't know if want. Pretty much. Actually, right now I'm angry because basically the reason that X Plus R hasn't come out yet is because they're just like, ah, we're going to work on this. Other. Wow, okay. But uh, is, is Plus R what might bring back Guilty Gear for you? Guilty Gear never left for me, dude. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean the newer versions, like when it got later to Axon Core, and what, you were talking about the one that they eventually went to that kind of broke it for you. Uh, it didn't get broken for me. I mean, like, it was Slash was really boring. Okay, that's what I'm. I think that's what I'm talking about, dude. I played AC since it came. Out. I think Slash is the one I remember you talking about. So, so your Slash was. I I don't know how to describe it other than like. Slash to his tits was the Super Street Fighter of okay 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 that. like it was super boring right and it was way slower compared to all the other ones so I mean between all the stuff they were showing off in Xart I was seeing like a lot of familiar stuff that like they were showing like I guess that's a dust loop with Saul in the corner at one point in the video I, I never got that technical with Guilty Gear but I can identify what it was did they take that out or something is that why they're showing it uh, dust loop was a super abusable technique in the earlier Guilty Gears that they removed from Slash and On. I remember because I remember Daigo doing it to a lot of people and getting very far in Guilty Gear tournaments just doing that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was called Dust Loop because it was just dust over and over again. Um, and it had enough hits done that it comboed into itself and it did a ridiculous amount of damage. But, like... I don't know. It's, I gotta say, there was a lot about that game that reminded me of Marvel 3. Not in terms of like, oh, you're gonna touch the guy and do a 40 second long combo that'll kill him. But in terms of like, we're trying very hard to make it look like it has all the stuff that the old game has. But we don't really know what the old game had. Like, look, you can do four dust in a row with Soul. That's cool, right? You guys remember that. Yeah, it was like a nod just for those people. But it's like... That's that's an organic thing that should come out of the game, not something that you go and put in on purpose. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Um, th somebody did a comparison of like Saul's animations in 3D versus his animations in 2D, and it's like, of course they look like that because that's what they were trying to do. Do you like the look of it though? Eh. I think it looks. I think it looks cool. They're going for like 
It almost looks like they're going for like the Western Street Fighter 4 bulky. You know how they like how they like beefed up all the characters in SF4 with that art style and I'm like are they trying to take suit after that and try to make a resurgence? Do you think so? I honestly don't know what they're doing. Kai Okay. <laughs> um like I said, I, I'm not even going to judge stuff that has gameplay videos out until I play it myself, so I'm not going to judge the game until I play it myself, but like, with their recent track record, everything since Axen Core, I do not know that that studio knows how to make a game anymore. That's what I meant to get at, that it's like, at this point, do you even think they are possible of making something that might be fun, and the answer is pretty much, I don't know. I would hesitate to say yes. I know a lot of people that are like, yo, it's gonna be new Guilty Gear, it's amazing, and like, but the stuff in the trailer was Blaze Blue Speed. It wasn't Guilty Gear Speed. So, I don't know. It's really pretty though. It's really pretty. You do know that uh, Ishimatari hasn't worked on, like, as a director for Guilty Gear since Reload. So, like, he's doing this game, so you gotta think more Reload in terms of, like, his design theory rather than more action board. No, I have to think more Blaze Blue in terms of game speed and systems that they're adding. Like, if they bring back the Guilty Gear Guard Bar, then maybe I'll give them some credit because that was still like the best designed defensive mechanic in any game I've ever seen. But I'm sorry, like, there's been five BBs now and they're all fucking terrible. They're becoming more. And then there was Plus R and Cliff is just broke. And then Chip is super good now, and Dizzy is super good now. I mean, like, I don't know that they know what they're doing. I don't know. I was I was interested just to see the fact that Guilty Gear's coming back. Let's go. Like, and I would like to see more people playing it in general. Guilty Gear right now is like the hipster thing in the FGC, which really bothers me a lot because there are a bunch of people that are like, "Yo, Guilty Gear! I remember that game. I liked it. It was pretty big." No, you didn't play it. You didn't like it. You don't know shit about that game. They had Guilty Gear on the run back today. Those guys sucked. No. Oh. James Chen was winning. Okay. James is good at fighting games. James came to our Guilty Gear gathering last week. Look, James is not terrible at fighting games. James doesn't play Guilty Gear. Okay, okay, that's just it. He's just Guilty Gear. He doesn't play it yet. I don't know. I, right? It's like he's like me with Skullgirls, I guess. I like it. I'm just learning it. Like right now, Guilty Gear seems to be that thing that it's cool to like in the FGC. No, but I mean to everybody, it's like it's the, it's the quote unquote anime fighter that's cool to like. It was it was the third strike back of oh, Sia. Yeah, it was the third strike. Pyro versus Kid Pender. I don't know. I feel like the the cool game to like in the FGC right now, honestly, and I don't mean that because I'm here right now, is Skullgirls. I think right now, if you want to appeal to like a Harley hardcore group, and there's there's not a more hardcore group than Skullgirls fans at the moment, in my opinion. I will give you your check later. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Ten grand. <laughs> okay, so from the perspective of somebody that's in the Skullgirls community, why do you say that? Only because Where are all of these people. <laughs> they're they're on my channel. Every okay, ever since I stopped making Skullgirls videos around like version like 1.0 yeah. way back in the day and I didn't really get back into it because the netcode just wasn't that appealing on Xbox. Uh, I've had a consistent legion of quite a few people that I can't even count specifically that are constant like when are you going to do Skullgirls? When are you going to do Skullgirls? And especially after the fundraiser happened it really picked up after that and they're like you need to do this because you have a name in the community and to say I'm like guys you just got to support your game it's not me that has to save your game but then I eventually listen to people and I go out and I start trying this stuff again and I found that a lot of the dudes that are around this community are really supportive like more so than others because let's be honest a lot of guys in the FGC kind of like the hardcore hardcore guys that not even as much go to tournaments are just really hard to approach about their fighting game and they hate everything else so well, yeah I mean the prevailing attitude in the FGC right now I want to make sure I got the names right the prevailing attitude in the FGC right now seems to be I like my thing and if you like something else you are a terrible person yep can't stand I mean look I think cross Tekken is total poop right but I'm not gonna tell you you shouldn't play it and I'm not gonna tell you that you're a bad person because you enjoy the game that is that is 
totally the prevailing attitude of the FGC, and I can't stand it. And I, I, I mean, I can't even blame people because I kind of had this mentality. It's like this, this like loyalty mentality, especially when it comes to smaller communities like the fighting game community, that you bind yourself to something and you never let go of it. And I was like that with Capcom games. Like I bound myself to Capcom games and I never let go of them. Screw KOF, screw everything else. And then over time, I realized, well, there's not going to be a lot of fighters coming out for a while. That should probably go away because we can use everything we can get at this point. Like we can't really, we don't really have the uh, the luxury of being picky. This isn't this isn't mid 2012 or like there's 18 fighters coming out in a certain month. So I don't know. It just it seems like within the community of people here, and I get a lot of gruff from all the communities of like hardcore guys because they just hate the hell out of me. That a lot of the Skullgirls guys that are really hardcore have been nothing but supportive. And every single person that is, I've either not really just met here, but online on Twitter has always been, we'll help you out no matter what. We're just looking for people to make the scene a little bit bigger. Yeah. Um, I'm actually really appreciative of our fans. And I think, I mean, this is going to sound weird, but I think one of the reasons that people are so supportive of this game is because you can talk to the developers, right? We're not dudes sitting in Japan going, you know what, Ryu's Crouching Hard Kick really needs one more frame of startup. Like People don't realize that that's something, that's a commodity that hasn't really existed with big fighting games before. Oh, never. And, I mean, like... Someone said better appreciate us. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we do. I mean, like, because... I made this game as something that I want to play, right? That's that's why it exists. But I watch people play it. If they do stuff that's broken or if there's something that other people aren't having fun with, I will look at that and I'll try to like take it into account and see what I can do to make the game a better game. I want... I want I want to make something that I can play for 10 years. Like, I actually had someone ask me, what do you see as the shelf life of Skullgirls? You know, because there are a lot of games that they put out, like, that you can tell. They're just like, hey, this will last, like, six months and it'll be great. I mean, like, I'm sorry, but, like, it lo it, Injustice looks like one of those, hey, we're just going to shit this out and it'll be around for a year and a half and then people will... It is very fun right now, but... But it's like, and then people will find some broken stuff or we'll put out the next game and this game will die, right? That's not why I'm here, right? I grew up with Marvel and Third Strike and CVS2, games that lasted 10, and Accent Core, like games that lasted 10 years, ST. Um, my goal for this game is to be able to make something and refine it into something that has enough depth that people can play it for as long as they want to play it for. Like, we didn't have we'll put this game out and then in two years we'll put out a sequel and everyone will forget about the original. I want people to remember the original. Answer, answer me this, like, I think, I don't know where I read it, it might have been on a news post someplace when the discussion of the all the characters that were happening through the poll results, that some of them were being considered for Skullgirls 2? So, the reason we would switch to 2 is actually has nothing to do with wanting to make a sequel. It's because if we switch to something that qualifies as no longer the original game, we no longer have to pay the people that are under the original game contract, which are groups of people that aren't doing anything on the game anymore, just collecting money, and also groups of people that we may not necessarily like very much. So if we did a sequel, it wouldn't be because we really want to make a sequel and have you forget the original, it would be so that we can stop paying the people that don't deserve to get paid for this. Because you have a roster of character now, characters that now dictate a sequel number, and you actually have something that can result in making a better experience and a more controlled of experience. Pretty much. A sequel would be like the minimum change that we could make to get it to be not, to get it to count as not the same product. Um, I, like, my original goal and the thing that I'm doing with the stuff, like, I, you know that the every week here there's completely different changes and everything. Like this week, Valentine can stack poison loads, so she gets she gets three different levels of poison. So was it like I get three greens or something like that? Uh, so you can do like if you load a green, you get level one, which is a small amount of time and crappy extra hit stun. If you load two before you throw it, you get longer time and more hit stun. If you load three before you throw it, you get longer time, even more hit stun, and it doesn't go away unless they hit you with a super. Is, is the, so the level three in this build would be greater than the normal green in the original? Basically, the, the original versions are like level two now. And then there's a worse one and a better one. Gotcha. That's pretty crazy. Also, like her counter, her poison counter, 
uh, always applies level three of whatever you have, even if you didn't load three levels of it yet. So, I mean, I'm doing stuff like this every week because what I really want, like, I'm sorry to say this, but as someone who has now made a fighting game, most of the stuff that they were doing for sequels is like a month and a half of work. Yeah. And then they were like, a year later it would come out and they would charge you full price for it again. I mean, like, what, what I really wanted to do with this game was put it out and refine it enough that it basically becomes what would normally be its own sequel or even its own sequel sequel. And you're still on your original 15 bucks, and maybe you bought like two or three characters. Yeah. You know, I want this game to be as good as it can possibly be, and I don't, I don't think that there's enough space or like difference between most fighting game sequels to warrant another number. Yeah, and when you eventually have the full roster of of selected characters that we the fans chose, how big is the roster at that point? Uh. 13? It's 13, okay. That's that's a pretty big amount. And Squiggly Big Man, Roboforce, yeah, okay, I was right, it's 13. So, in comparison to other games that receive upgrades as far as an original version to the Ultimate version, or the Super version, or 2012 version, that's about right, because that's that percentage increase is pretty equivalent, if not maybe more, than some other games. So what you're looking at, like, UMVC3 added more characters than this, yeah. but AE didn't add anything. That's true. Right. Well, did A... 2012 didn't cost anything, right? 2012 was free, I think. AE, it was, one of them was free and one of them eventually cost... 12, but I, what I mean is they didn't add any characters for it, right? Like, it's, uh, the Blaze Blue updates added like two, right? So, it depends what you're looking at. The average is somewhere around four, and uh, Marvel is usually an exception. I'm gonna stop all conversations for a sec. Did I just see Chun Li's like raging demon kick on Squiggly there, where she jumped into the air and did a flying like kick that was a super? Was that was that Squiggly or did I miss that? Was that the other character? That was was that double? Okay. Yeah, that was the end of Double's level three. Okay. 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 Actually, based on the Shichizi. Okay. Thank God. Fuck, I miss Chun Li and Marvel one so much. I went back and looked at. Uh, how they moved during the cinematic and which direction she went at the end and like how the other person went so yeah it's based on that sick I called it it looked good <laughs> I was unable to convince them to do Chinese giant Chinese characters <laughs> dun, 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 dun. yeah for anybody that missed out on Chun-Li and Marvel vs. Capcom 1 probably one of the most ch fun Chun-Li's in fighting games me and you son of a bitch <laughs> First player is second. You want to be first? I will. Okay. 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 I do need a stick, sadly. Me too. Oh, yeah, no, that was actually.